Good Monday to everybody. It is April 20th, 2020. I'm Glenn Hausman. I'm with Anthony Melcury, and this is our live show. Anthony Melcury, good to see you, sir. Good morning, sir. I'm telling you, I feel like uh, this Monday morning we're going to get right in the thick of things, and um, there's a lot going there's a lot going on out there. But before we start and, and introduce our incredible next guest, which I'm really excited about, and we just back uh, behind the studio, and we just realized that him and I bumped into each other a couple times along the way. Mm -hmm. uh in our careers uh so how was your weekend real quick Lynn? uh my weekend was all right it was a little bit it was a little bit this it was a little bit that it was a little bit restful i made a great pork shoulder butt but we're going to talk about that later anthony i think we got to get right into uh the brand newly minted ceo of radisson hotel group americas that would be mr jim alderman who only has a limited amount of time with us so we will talk about all the other stuff later jim congratulations on this incredible position that you've uh, you've achieved in your career Thanks, Glenn. Thanks. Thanks for having me, <clears throat> Anthony. It's great to see you again, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity coming on here with you guys. I follow this religiously, and obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of yours, Glenn, and a huge fan of yours as well, Anthony. So happy to be here and uh, and be here, you know, hopefully to uh, support our franchisee community. That's great. That's yep. the right attitude to have, right, Anthony? Support that franchisee community. Absolutely. And first of all, thank you for being here. Um, you're, you're, you know, it's, it's a big deal to have you on the show. So right away, I just want to say thank you. And let's get right into that. So what are you doing uh, today and what have you done and what are you going to do in the future for that franchisee? So we immediately, um, within the first week, announced uh, the beginning of 21 different initiatives to uh, support these franchisees, including uh, we suspended finance charges. Uh, we deferred PIPs until next year. Uh, suspended uh, the fees for uh, revenue opti optimization charges. Uh, I'm, I'm glancing down because I didn't memorize all 21, but I've certainly got them all in front of me. Mm -hmm. Credit card administration fees, we've waived those. GM certification deferrals, PIP compliance, QA suspension. Uh, unless it's a wow. failing property, then we'll pick that up sometime in the late fall. Um, new standards deferrals, we've, we've, we've pushed those all back, breakfast waivers, grab and go options, uh, we've closed F&B outlets, we've obviously closed pool and fitness centers, uh, we've extended the, uh, the uh, contact care response time and, you know, without penalizing people for that. Uh, we've removed the welcome stations, we've paused compliance actions, um, we've, in, any renewals, uh, an IFF, uh, administrative fees, we've waived those. Uh, the voice of guest survey changes, uh, Oracle fee. We've worked with Oracle to defer uh, some of those fees as well. Wow. And uh, with, Re with uh, Review Pro, we've given a two-month credit and other recurring fees we've just we've pushed out as much as possible. We've also individually negotiated with about 250 franchisees so far on their specific situations of what we can do for them. We've held uh, over 10 seminars uh, with our um, with our franchisees and had over a thousand people on different live town halls. And right now we, we maintain a really nice ratio of about, uh, with our regional uh, directors that support our franchisees of about 45 properties per, per individual director. So that, that group uh, is, is, is really tight. They don't call into a center and then get assigned to somebody. They know specifically who they work with all the time. And I've been on the phone on a weekly basis calling as many owners as I can. And the one thing that I hear back from every one of them is they immediately name their franchise director who that's they, yes, I've been in touch with, you know, they, uh, with Devin, I've been in touch with Barry, I've been in touch with, with, uh, with the very specific people that they deal with. And it's good to hear that they've developed that kind of relationship versus I've been in touch with who you assigned me to. And uh, so we really, we're really trying to stay on top of it with all of these individual franchisees, because this is the worst experience they've ever had yeah. and what's your what's your biggest challenge as a leader right now right now um hoping that uh, the ppp gets uh, refunded uh and and trying to you know line up and support our franchisees in uh in obtaining those uh those those loans those paycheck uh, paycheck protection uh loans and try to get people back to work but uh the biggest thing is is trying to build a bridge a bridge back to uh the future what does it look like as it comes back you know, I've got a, an unbelievable team here with uh, Ali El Basuni, our chief operating officer, and Kristen Richter, our chief commercial officer. 
actually the operational plan they had in place even days before I started, uh, which was an auspicious time, but even days before I started, had really uh, borne fruit right away. They, our RGI is for the month to date in April will be up about 11.6% month to date. It was up, it was up five, uh, close to 5% last month. And you know, that's a function of both where our properties are because we're not generally uh, so concentrated with urban properties, but it's also a function of, of a, a great sales team and, and a reasonable uh, price offering, with, especially with country and its suites. Yeah. Uh, wow. That's a, uh, that's great that you have this, this team in place. I had a chance to, uh, to be with the team back in February, just prior, a few weeks prior to the announcement you were coming on board and all the speculation was hot and heavy about who was going to take over the, uh, the position. And no matter how much we tried, I couldn't get it out that it was going to be you, but, uh, I will say the team was in a great place and I really like the, uh, the tone of that annual meeting. And I love that, uh, Radisson took on this five-year plan and that you really had a clear coherent thing. So so right now, you have at least that in place in order to layer over all of this uh, stuff that's regarding the crisis on top of it, instead of having to be in complete panic mode. That's right, and and that's what we're doing is is we're we're trying to keep our eye on fulfilling those parts of the five year plan, retooling the areas that need to be retooled, obviously backing off of uh, of some of the initiatives that right now just don't make any sense to enact, and and trying to take a zero base look at 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 everything else. But uh, you know, part of you know, what was key to joining this organization was uh, really the, the leadership of uh, and, and a mentorship I've received from Federico Gonzalez. Um, I mean, he really is a, a fantastic leader with an amazing background. So it's- And he's the, uh, the CEO of the overall company for those yes. who do not know who he is. Anthony? Going forward, say we're three months from now, four months from now, and the majority of hotels are back open and things are still you know, a little strange. People still maybe wear a mask and people maybe aren't shaking hands, but we're getting back to it, right? We're starting to feel our way through the darkness. When people come to you, when owner, and this is kind of hypothetical, but I think it's important, there are still going to be struggles. The, the, the People are maybe be making their mortgage. People are probably making their uh, payments uh, for their employees, their, their paychecks. But maybe they're not going to be able to pay the franchise fee. Maybe they're not going to be able to pay the revenue fee. What is uh, the plan go, you know, long term? Is there one? Yeah, I think we're taking a look at, at how we're going to um, finish out the year. Again, we have uh, we've 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 set aside the finance charges uh, and we've we've deferred in a, in, a, in a number of situations. And so, you know, it's uh, we're, we're certainly cognizant of that. As you know, it is a fee business. So we we exist on on the fees as well, and so when they're hurting, we're hurting as well. But we um, we certainly are are working with them on an individual basis. Again, I said we've probably uh, renegotiated or negotiated close to 245 individual agreements with with people who have come forward and and spoken with us and and worked out you know where 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 how far we can we can push things down the line and certainly not you know dinging them with finance charges and things like that that's a, that's a, i think the most important thing is to be cognizant right. of you know they're not sure when it's coming back we're not sure when it's coming back certainly no one wants it to last any longer than it's than it, than it can naturally last but it's it's all about you know getting the guests back in the hotel and getting people traveling again and then how does it reset you know some of the standard business practices we've been talking recently about you know, how comfortable is anyone going to be eating off of a buffet for a breakfast buffet? You know, right. we, we've got to come up with options for that. You don't want to have 90 percent food waste as you toss everything out because no one wants to go near a, you know, a, a tray of eggs or a, a thing of sausage or have bread that other people are potentially handling. So, you know, we're coming up with standard operating procedures on that. We're checking. We're working with our global partner, Diversity, on, um, you know, some some standardizations and possibly looking into some certifications. You, you, you probably saw that uh, a core announced a, a certification with Vertas, uh, I believe, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're, look, we're looking at options and, and the best way to go about that. It's risky, as you know, to, to, to decide on a single standardization without knowing that it's actually right. really going to work. And so, you know, on, on, um, on, on the cleanliness of things, I was on the phone with our sustainability team this morning and was, was questioning them on the, um, as you know, we announced the getting rid of use of single use uh, plastics and I said, well, are people going to be super comfortable with, uh, you know, a commonality of shampoo, conditioner and soap and, uh, you know, to make sure they're tamper proof, which they are, but also to make sure that there's a cleaning protocol, that those things are, are perfectly clean every time someone new comes into the room. And so, 
you know, we're working with with them on 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 everything that we can, and certainly our, our we're we're open all the time uh, with uh, our teams are working twenty four seven to uh, stay in touch with these franchisees. And mm-hmm. So it's been tough, I and mean, we've closed about 80, 84 hotels um, in the Americas. Uh, globally, it's it's far higher than that. Uh, five, uh, four in uh, our own managed portfolio. And then we're going to combine operations of, uh, of two that are next to each other. So it'll basically be five. Right. And uh, of those 84, 27 in Latin, are in Latin America, five are in Canada. And, you know, globally, I mean, it's, it's over 250. What do you think the front desk looks like coming out of this? Is everybody want mobile key check-in? What does the front desk look like in your opinion? I, I, I think that's what it is. It's mobile key check-in. It's, uh, it's the ability to select your room. Uh, I, I think I think that's going to be a lot of it, uh, Anthony. That's that's uh, people are going to you know demand a faster implementation of that technology, and it's certainly something with our our global. We we were in the middle of a global rollout of a, a complete new PMS CRS and and a, and a full switch over to enable all those capabilities, and, and we'll certainly be speeding that up uh, in Europe and 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 taking a look at, at how fast we can get things like that rolled out in the Americas. Right. Now, good news is there are a lot of people on all of the feeds saying uh, congratulations to you about uh, achieving this uh, this position, which should not go understated because to uh, to become a CEO is really, really uh, challenging stuff. It's great to see how you're jumping right in there to take control over this situation. And uh, what, what I really like is that you're not waffling on anything. You seem to be to be in control. Uh, ultimately, um, what was those what was those first few days like when you were coming on board and talking to all of these individual franchisors because the franchisees rather, because they're in there, they're panicking. They're looking to you to, to help them out. So a little behind the scenes, if you can, about what that was like, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was interesting because, uh, part of it, I, I, I got, I owe all the credit, uh, Glenn to the, the mentors that I've had in the bit, in the business mm-hmm. and the people that I've worked for in the past. And certainly with, you know, when you work for giants in the industry, like, uh, Barry Stern, like, and, and uh, guys like uh, who are who are incredibly decisive individuals like Eric Danziger, um, you you um, you learn that you there's no such thing as waffling. But um, you know I, I think it's a little bit of a different background because I'm really not I I don't think I'm a, a characteristic you know up through the C-suite uh, CEO. My background is much more development and and and, a, and more diverse as far as you know I've I've been a franchisee. I've been a hotel owner. And uh, I've been in their shoes and that have been a lender as well. So, and I've been an asset manager. So I, I kind of know exactly, you know, everything that they're dealing with. Certainly every situation is individual and everyone's capital situation is individual. Um, but, you know, I wanted to let uh, our owners know right away that I, I, I've, I've been in their shoes and I certainly am, am here to work with them as much as we can and, and, and understand where the pressure points are and made myself available, say, look, when it's time to talk to your bank, I'll go with you. You know, I, I, we're not so big that I can't individually go help out uh, franchisees. And, I, and I'm committed to do that, you know, um, as much as possible. You know, we don't want to see a bunch of these loans end up with special mm-hmm. servicers. And we don't want to see, um, you know, these properties, um, you know, go into any kind of lockbox default type of situation. And, and I, I certainly wouldn't want to be... Um, a lender, you know, in, in front of a judge saying I took a property during COVID. Uh, I, you know, I think that everyone's going to be coming down on the side of the franchisee here. And so, so, you know, in the early days, it was as much about communication as much as possible, trying to call people, trying to be open to their incoming calls and, and look, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. And, you know, I'm sure that I, I I wish we had, you know, giant barrels of cash here to where we could just say, hey, we're going to take care of everybody. But as you know, that's not the way franchisors work. We're a very asset light company um, and and we certainly do exist on fees, but we're trying to do everything we can. Working very closely uh, with AHOA, working very closely with HLA. We held a seminar the other day for over 400 people with Chip Rogers. Mm-hmm. Talking about uh, uh, what HLA is doing for us and, and, and trying to see where we can uh, support AHLA more with the, uh, as you know, www.ahla.com slash act puts you in touch with your legislators. And you'd be surprised how many people actually have direct relationships with their legislators. And, and so, you know, if you do, please go to that uh, website that, that I, I, I just gave out and, and, and let us know. Maybe you live across the street. Maybe one of them is your cousin or your brother-in-law or your sister-in-law or something. Let's, uh, 
you know, let's make sure that these uh, legislators know that hospitality is the heart of America and certainly on an economic multiplier basis represents far more than one in every 25 jobs. I've always been dubious about that number. I think it's far higher than that. And we're the heart of communities and everyone, you know, from from the smallest town, smallest hotel in the smallest town to the biggest hotel in the largest towns. Um, you know, these are the service individual, these service professionals and, and, and our, our line level workers are what drive, what help drive the economy and help keep us strong. You know, I have everything you said. I think the most important thing you said, and you said a lot of important things is I'll go with you, you know, and that's the difference between a brand like yours and maybe another brand. I will go with you. Not we'll support you. Not I'll have my assistant go with you. Not that good luck. We're here. If you need us, give us a call. I'll be on the conference call. I will go with you. Those words to me right there, um, that's the leadership. That's a leader. That's a person that's not hiding. And that's a person to say, I know that my presence is important because me as the CEO, that bank will pay attention if I'm in the room. And 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 I just congratulate you for that. And that is an example to, to young people of what leadership looks like. That That one little statement out of everything you said is why you're in your position. So thank you for saying that. Thank yeah, now uh, Jerry says it's a great way to build real relationships with your franchisees, and I think that makes uh, that makes a whole lot of sense because you're you're playing no BS at at this point. You're revealing uh, ultimately who you are and how you want to be perceived throughout this entire uh, situation. Um, but uh, it, it must be an interesting role for you also to try to get people to, to to calm down and not be scared because there's a lot of livelihoods at risk too, and you're kind of thrust into this position of not just CEO but almost a uh, ad advisor, therapist, father figure, all of these kinds of things to uh, potential franchise, right? franchisees, right? You know, I, I, that's, I, I, I think, I think, um, I, look, I try to, I, I, I want to be, I want to be there for them. I think mm -hmm. that, um, you know, everyone's a little bit of a therapist these days, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. We all have our, our networks we rely upon and, uh, and I certainly have my little uh, group text that uh, I've been mm -hmm. involved with, with a few people that you know, Glenn, since the very beginning. And anytime one of us gets a little down on what's happening, the other, the other, the other ones on there build us, a, build us back up. So it's important to, to, to be there for them. It's important to keep up with it. But, but some of the, the stories you hear, I mean, you're talking about people who've spent 30 years, people who came right. over uh, to this country, uh, you know, worked in a hotel, maybe with a relative, saved up enough money to do a partnership and take that hotel over. And now, you know, 30 years later, they've got 25 or 30 hotels and they're looking around going, I'm seeing everything vaporized in right. weeks. I mean, it, you know, and, and it is, it is really tough. And this is where the government really has to step in that no one did anything to cause it. This wasn't over leveraging. This wasn't uh, this wasn't greed. This was, this was a absolutely unforeseen act and, and it just can't happen. These fortunes, these family fortunes, small family fortunes. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about, you know, you're not talking about fortunes. You're yeah, talking about we've made a nice about, living. Yeah. 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 Talking about, let's protect the multi billionaires. This is a, this in, in many cases, one or two hotels, this is the livelihood of, right. of these families. This is all they've ever known. The second and third generation are coming into it, especially in the AHO community. And, um, and, and, we want to be there to support them and, and not just obviously not just the whole, but all, all of the different constituencies that, that we service. But when you when you look up and down, there's plenty of people who that's their business. It's not a side business. It's not an investment. It's their business. They're working the desk. Right. You know, you know, and you said, you know, hospitality is the heart of America. And that is perfectly said. And it's true. And these owners that have come to this country or, or born in this country that have built their little portfolio. It's not only about them. It's about the housekeeper, the front desk clerk. Right. A lot of these areas around America, the difference between uh, depending on government and depending on themselves are these jobs. And it is so critical. I, If you've ever watched my show and anybody that's ever watched the show will know, I am the biggest cheerleader of housekeepers. You right. get in front of a housekeeper and, and, and you're probably going to have a long day if you're, if you're messing with one of my housekeepers. And I say one of my housekeepers, because every housekeeper in America that's cleaning the toilet bowl is, is mine. And, and, and I will do anything to protect them. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about real jobs. We're talking about real communities. We're not talking about hotels. All oh, these people are rich and they got five-star hotels. And we're talking about keeping people employed. We're talking about 
the people that are in the B and C communities too, not the A-list communities like Manhattan, but the small rural areas, the small truck stops, the small uh, hotel on the side of the road. Right. We need to ensure that those businesses, because like you said, it's the heartbeat of America, period, right. end of story. Right. And their safety. Their safety is incredibly important. I mean, thankfully, uh, we had a very early case at one of our, our, our major properties, Radisson Blue, uh, Mall of the Americas, uh, where we had a housekeeper um, who come down with COVID and, and she went into the hospital and she was on a ventilator and she okay. was in critical intensive care. And we were following up daily. We were certainly, uh, we we're taking food to her family and she's home. Uh, Andrea Prado, uh, she's home. I'm so pleased and so happy that she is out of the hospital. She got through it. She's home. And, uh, and, and so we try to make sure that we call every single person who's been affected by actually getting the virus. And, and, and my colleagues throughout the world, Federico and Chema and Katarina, they're, they're doing the exact same thing uh, when someone has come down with this and trying to stay, you know, stay personally connected. And, and it, it, that they're the heartbeat of the hotel. Look, I, I started cleaning toilets. There's actually a position below dishwasher. Uh, I remember two, $2.50 an hour, started cleaning toilets when I was 13 and, uh, and, and had to get a permission for my parents to do so. But that's how long I've been in the hospitality industry. And I, I understand it from the ground up and uh, understand all the positions and how every single person in that hotel is important to driving, you know, the success of that hotel. Right. I got a question from uh, Tony uh, Yusfine. Um, do you foresee the luxury segment or luxury hotels struggling more than perhaps mid-tier hotels? And then how do you overcome the corporate segment dealing with liabilities of bringing their employees on the road or to a meeting or something like that? You know, uh, it's a good question. Addressing luxury, I, I, I saw some interesting stuff coming out of uh, Asia early on this uh, this revenge spending. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm so pent up and I haven't been able to spend money in so long that I'm going to go back right. and spend money quickly. I mean, you know, the luxury segment um, it largely is dependent upon travel. Uh, and not everyone that flies to a luxury property is flying on their own plane. Mm -hmm. And so until air travel comes back, I mean, I think luxury, the luxury segment is going to be going to be pretty well affected, you know, almost almost more so than than other segments. Um, I, I believe the mid scale segment, a lot of drive to business. It's going to be interesting to see. I always said, you know, if I can drive there in five hours, I'm going to drive versus fly because you figure yeah. out how to get to the airport. Hours my role, too. Flight, and, and, and I would do that. But now I'm wondering, is that. Is that longer? Is it seven? Is it nine? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure what it is, but certainly, you know, we, you know, to be a, a slightly selfish for our franchisees in Radisson Hotel Group, and we will benefit from having, you know, uh, much more distribution in the in the suburban areas. But um, I think luxury will have uh, somewhat of a tough time. Maybe drive to luxury resorts might mm -hmm. might benefit uh, more, but uh, certainly destination luxury. Um, it, it, could, it could be tough. I, I, I certainly want people to get back on planes. Um, I have not. I drove 21 and a half hours home from, uh, from Minnesota without, without stopping, um, except for gas, yep. um, when, I, when I came back after my first week. But um, I think that um, luxury may uh, suffer a little bit. And corporate, as far as liability, bringing the employees back, look, our number one thing is safety of our employees, safety of our franchisees, safety of our guests. And until we can assure that, then we, then we, we won't be bringing them back to these, these closed hotels. We had a hotel close, one of our very first one in the Seattle area, right in the heart of, of this in Bothell, uh, country and in suites. And, um, you know, we're going through the protocols to make sure that's completely cleaned and been right before that reopens because it was closed because of, um, uh, because of, of activity. But, um, you know, we're, we're certainly... Everyone's everyone's dealing with this. I mean, no one knows how many hotels have had infected people in and out, and so cleaning protocols are going to be paramount. And and whether it's whether it's the fogging that Amazon is doing, whether it's the sprays, whether it's you know titanium dioxide coating and ultraviolet lights. I mean, we need to ramp up the certification and the testing of all of the types of things that can be done. Um, right. To, on 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 all types of tra of transit. I mean, that includes you know ride shares. Yeah, I'm worried about those uh, Lyft and Uber drivers. All right, so Brian Klein, he's a senior business strategist at MMGY Global. And for those of you who don't know, they're they're very involved in doing this great survey of, uh, every year about the portrait of the American uh, traveler. And, and we're working right now to get somebody from there to come on and talk about that. But in the meantime, this 
Brian is interested in what are the macro and micro indicators you're going to look at to decide whether it might be right to advise a hotel to, to reopen at some point. I like that question because it's getting us to the other side of this thing. And it's, a, it's more of a positive thing. Right. I think it has to do with the stage, uh, the, the stage op um, uh, openings that are happening locally in, in mm -hmm. the States. And it has to do with, the, uh, you know, the, the declination of the, of the curve on, on new mm -hmm. cases. Because the last thing we want is wave two. You know, we, we really don't. I think that would be even more damaging to open too early. But I also realize the damage is being done by by some places that, that feel like they they have it under control. Um, right. I think it really has to do with uh, following the, gu the, the guidelines of the WHO, the CDC and local government authorities and taking a look at when when do we think it's safe? When are the hospitals able to handle um, you know, normal flows here in, in Charlotte, where I, where I currently live before. I mean, I, I do have an apartment that I've been in for a total of six hours in Minnesota, but uh, here in Charlotte, where I live, they had plans for a second hospital in the convention center, you know, a temporary hospital, and they've suspended those. So uh, yet yesterday we had another, you know, peak of about 25 or so uh, uh, new cases uh, in, in Mecklenburg County. So I think it really has to do with, uh, with the, uh, yeah, the mission rates and, and, and make sure yeah. that those are on the, the decline before people are going to feel comfortable. Yeah. It's all about, the, it's all about people traveling again, just right. because the hotel is open doesn't mean that or reopen doesn't mean there's going to be anyone there. We've got to have people traveling. Yeah. And what I think as we open the, the most important thing of, of really coming together, listen, we're all coming together because we have no choice. We're at zero. Right. But as we open up the people that are taking this seriously and still being safe and still social distancing, and taking it seriously, we will get the economy moving faster. Mm -hmm. The people who will be in Cavalier, those will scare people from traveling. That would scare people right. from wanting to go. Going into a hotel without somebody at the front desk with a mask or gloves on does not tell me that everything's safe. What it tells me is you're not paying attention. And that will scare me more than uh, having the faith, uh, not having it will scare me more than them having it. And I think that that's kind of what I'm concerned about going forward. I think you're going to see once it starts opening slowly, you're going to start seeing a lot of stress. And uh, two, there's two types of people, right? And mm -hmm. the people that pay attention and people that don't. And I think we need to not be cavalier about this. Just because we're open doesn't mean that everyone's safe. We've got it. This is going to be in stages. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, Michael Schindler, president at Four Corners Advisors, who's been on this show uh, b before, says Wynn Resorts just published a 23-page cleaning sanita sanitation plan for its resorts. Take out the casino-specific matters and the hotel elements of their plan should be a nice guideline. So for all of you out there, maybe you want to check that out. We'll see if we can get a copy of that and run. I posted, I post, I posted it this week Did on you? my LinkedIn. Just go on my all LinkedIn right. and, and take a look at it. A friend of mine sent it to me and I read through it. And mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go through it uh, sometime this week. We'll, we'll talk about different yeah, standards. I've been, read, I've been reading it and studying it. And we're going to have people... Uh, that are in the sanitation business, uh, sanitizing business, I should say, in the next week or two on the show and what the standard is. Um, so I think that's the next step of of the conversation is uh, what is the standard? And every standard is going to be different, you know, for for each each company that people are going to feel more comfortable uh, with with what they're researching. Just because one company is doing it doesn't mean another company is going to do it. Everyone's got to feel comfortable. And Jim, when you open these hotels and you send your employees, you've got to feel that 100 percent that this is your decision and you feel comfortable with it. So it's a very wow. personal decision. And, and, you know, and one of the things you said before, Glenn, about, wow, it must be uh, strange coming into a position like this or whatever word you use um, right now. And, you know, I'll challenge that in a sense of as a leader and a person that's tested and tried and you've been through this industry for many, many years, probably just as long, if not longer than I have. And this is what you're built for. I mean, this is why you're in the position. You don't get to this position because – uh, you didn't outlast everyone else. You got to this position because there's a lot of people that you've come up with and a lot of people that have been your peers and maybe even your bosses that you've kind of maybe outlasted or you've, you've outachieved simply because of your leadership. This is why you're in a position. You're not in a position to rah-rah and shake hands and have birthday parties and tell everybody you're doing a great job at the end of the year mm -hmm. or to say, hey, your rev party needs to be this or, hey, we need 10 more hotels. You're in this position for exactly this reason. Well, the, Anthony, that's, that's honestly – too kind of you to, to say, but I, I, I appreciate it. And, I, and again, I like to think that uh, it's really the people I, I, I've been lucky with, uh, lucky to work for and work with. Uh, I've, I've, I've been with some great leaders at some great companies, uh, probably 
too many companies. I feel like I'm the elder millennial at times in many places as I've been. But uh, I, I've I really worked with some great people who have uh, beat the heck out of me over over time and uh, and and really you know hardened my uh, my shell here when it comes to being able to put up with stuff. You know, interestingly enough, when I uh, rejoined Barry Sternlick at Starwood Capital uh, after working with him at Starwood Hotels, it was right at the very beginning uh, when Bear Stearns and Lehman went down. And so it's a different kind of crisis. It lasted, um, obviously the financial impact lasted longer, but certainly the impact on hotels was just nothing like this. I mean, financially, yes, a lot of hotels uh, suffered, but, uh, but it was more with the leverage structure and, uh, and, 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 and lenders versus, uh, versus no occupancy. I mean, we didn't go to, we didn't go to this same depth uh, in the great financial crisis as far as guests being gone. So one of the things that's happening now is young leaders are struggling. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing older leaders struggle. What's the one lesson? You don't have to say specifically who taught it to you, but what's the one lesson that you learned that stands out? You know, um, and I'll just real quick. My, mine is no excuses. I learned it from Colonel Hallams, who went on to be director of leadership right. at West Point. And he looked me in the eye and he said, no excuses. And that was the end of the conversation. And that's my kind of, that's my mantra. You know, Colonel Hams, who just passed away, was director of leadership at West Point. Do I need to say anything else? And, <laughs> and he taught, and, 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 and he, he taught me no excuses. What was the one thing that you learned? That's interesting because that's the one I was going to say. I was going to say no excuses, but uh, it's accountability. I mean, you, you can't, you, it, the buck doesn't go past me, um, you know, as far as, uh, as far as where it ends. And you, you have to, you have to make a decision. Uh, no decision is the worst thing you can do. You've got to make a decision. You've got to stick with it. You've got to live with it. And I think that's uh, that's really what it comes down to. And I, I've I've uh, I've watched decisions. I've been victim of and subject to decisions that I may not agree with, but I certainly like the fact that someone made them. Right. All right. So we're 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 being told that you are going to have to go because you are you know CEO of a major company. All that. Wait, 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 we got to wait. wait. We, this yes. is a live broadcast. He has people. He has people backstage at the live yes. broadcast. That's right. That that's right. Which is unprecedented. We don't usually allow that to happen over here at our at our we video a, we series. A, we have a green room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, un unfortunately, the, uh, the the gift uh, packages are not so great back there. All right. So um, if you want to learn more about what's going on with how um, Radisson Hotels is handling it, there's a scroll down there right now for you to be able to check it out. But Jim, we want to give you an opportunity. Any final thoughts, any final words, anything that you want to share with us before uh, we're forced to let you go? Again, it's uh, it's all about it's all about my team. I stepped into a role that already had an established executive committee uh, team uh, with Ali Obasuni as our CEO and Kristen Richter, our chief commercial officer, and Amber Thiel, our our, our CFO, have been doing just amazing work. But it's also about the global resources. The global resources of the Radisson Hotel Group. Um, when you take a look at you know the great success, part of why I took this role, Glenn, is is you know the brands really originated here in the states, but the great success that that Federico and uh, and his team have had throughout Europe and throughout Asia Pacific, and you take a look at their pipelines, roughly three times the size of our pipeline here in the Americas, which is part of the reason I'm here, and uh, and I really feel like the the roadmap is there, the five year plan is there, mm -hmm. the roadmap is there for our growth coming out of this, and franchisees are going to want to be with people who were there for them. That's right. In this crisis, and that's all that we're trying to be is be there for them, do what we can to make sure that uh, we're positioned to be the best partner they can choose on the other side of this thing. And, and, and hopefully we get to it, you know, sooner than everyone thinks. Yeah. Excellent. That, thank you, know, you I, so, so much, Anthony. I'm telling you, I, I, it's a great compliment when uh, Jim, you say that, that, that this show, you watch this show and you've been following our show and that someone in your position uh, finds this informative and, and needed is, is a great compliment to us. So it's, it, that compliment wasn't uh, wasted. I truly appreciate it. As a matter of fact, it makes me and Glenn double down on making sure that we're prepared and we have the right guests on. So it's worthy of your time. So again, uh, right. from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Good luck with your position. And I look forward to seeing you soon right. uh, on the road when we're all back. We're all back to being road warriors. Yeah, yeah man. Thank you. Really appreciate it, Jim. Really honored to have you here today. Good luck. Go get them. Keep up all the good work, man. Oh, man, Anthony. How uh, how awesome was that to have him here? And I got to say to all of you other brand leaders out there, look how that went. Everybody loved him. He made a good impression. Come on our show and talk to us. Um, next week, we're going to have on the, uh, the, the CEO of the Best Western Great Britain.
So that'll be uh, that'll be pretty good. We just like we just landed that interview there. We we got to get our friend, you know, our friend. We got to get uh, who runs the Americas. We got to get him on as well um, uh, for Best Western. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I got to tell you, from I just had like this 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 feeling of one of my people made it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I, me and Jay Mark haven't been friends through our careers. I don't really know him. Uh, we've met each other from time to time. Probably waved over a, a dinner table as we said uh, before yep. uh, we came on live. Uh, a very important dinner table, I might add. It was an inc- incredible meeting. Mm-hmm. But my 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 point being is, he seems like uh, a person I grew up in the industry with. He understands this industry. We went on different paths, but like I felt like one of the good guys made it. And it's uh, and you could see it by his leadership. You could see it by his honesty. Like he said something on there. And I won't repeat it, but he said something yeah. about the, co- the the virus in one of his employees, and he even said the hotel that they had it in. A lot of a lot of presidents wouldn't say that. A lot of CEOs wouldn't say that. And it's just like, hey, we're all in this. Why are we hiding? Let's just this is what it is. We're going to come back. Everything's going to be clean, and we're going to do our best. And and I just I just thought that was amazing. Yeah, uh, that, that and, is amazing. Uh, and uh, we'll bring up uh, we'll bring up that comment that you wanted to go to in just one sec. But I did uh, want to say that while uh, Bartech is officially over with their run of sponsoring our show because they only had the budget for three weeks, I wanted to thank them and give them some extra time because they stepped up to help us in a time of need, so we could continue to tell these great stories to you. And you know, we could do silly little things like pay our our, our mortgage and stuff like that. So make sure you check out Bartech. Find them at info at bartech.com. They're there to help you find more profitability with in room food and beverages in your hotel. They've got great systems in place to help you do that. So, Anthony, you had a uh, wanted to answer this question over here. I just purchased a 17 room hotel uh, in the Adirondacks and we were moving along doing complete renovations and new websites uh, with goal of being open May 1st. This has really scared us going forward. In this uh, scary part, I can't, I can't shop for linens and blankets and towels and curtains, and I n- now need to come up with the cleaning protocol and being a new owner. It's very scary. I appreciate how scared you are. Um, I would be scared as well. The good news is you're probably in a good position because you're in the Adirondacks. People are going to be traveling. They're not going to be taking European vacations. They're going to be driving. I guarantee you, uh, if you have a nice hotel, you can convince me to come, and, and I'll spend money with your hotel. What I want you to do is I want you to go to the Hospitality Success on Facebook. Um, it's, it's, uh, my business is called hospitality success. Uh, but this is hospitality success on Facebook where we're actually, um, talking to owners all over this country for free. Mm -hmm. We're Mm -hmm. giving you advice for free. And also every week, um, my partner and I, Jeremy Pinkerton, we have a competition or a contest, I should say, where Mm -hmm. we give away, uh, consulting, uh, for free, completely one-on-one consulting during the week uh, for free. So we, we talk on Facebook Live, give all the information and all the advice you'd want, but then we give one-on-one if you if you enter this contest. Uh, someone uh, in Wildwood, New Jersey, uh, won last week. We'll be consulting with him this week uh, one-on-one. So that's one way to get information. Follow Glenn and I. Follow my Facebook Live show every day at 2 o'clock with my partner, Go to Hospitality Success, go to ahoa.com, go to ahla.com, uh, go to Cintas, go to uh, – uh, there's so much information right now that people are giving out for free. This is probably – it's the worst and best of times for a new right. owner because the worst of times because you're closed. It's the best of times because we're giving them everything away for free. Every, we're giving information. Information's king. You opening is important to our community. It's important to the hospitality community. We need to get you open. We need not. We don't want you to walk away from this property. We need to get you open, and we're going to help you. So go to Hospitality Success on Facebook. Mention that I uh, I mentioned uh, your comment. And uh, matter of fact, at 2 o'clock, uh, we're having a Facebook Live show. Uh, so go and ask that co- uh, question again, and then we'll, we'll get you on. All right. So uh, we also got I love your general thoughts. This is from uh, Brian Quinn, a, a good friend of ours. He's an SVP of development and choice hotels. General thoughts on giving guests access to fresh air. Many hotels restrict windows <coughs> and will exterior har- uh, exterior corridor hotels make a comeback. That's interesting because I understand they uh, you know, these rooms are sealed. So the HVAC bills, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I've always been one to want to open the windows and get some actual fresh air. I think we'll see that again one day with new builds because you're not going to retrofit all these old buildings. You know, it's amazing. I, I have that that hasn't even entered my brain until this second, and I think that is amazing because 
I'll give you an example. Do you remember when uh, I went to Margaritaville? You hooked me up uh, with the great folks of Margaritaville. I do. I do remember you uh, doing that. And I was supposed to do their event this year, but wah, wah, got postponed. And, and I and they have open door. They have open hall corridors, if I remember right. And I re- right? Am I correct? I don't know because I wasn't. I wasn't at the. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in Florida. You went to the Orlando. Yeah, yeah, Florida, yeah. Right. They, yeah, they yeah. Have open, yeah. And um, I remember really enjoying that. I remember having that fresh air and. So, yeah, I mean, as long as it's done in a modern way and as long as it's done, I think people will like that. I think I don't like when my windows are closed. I hate when my windows are closed more than anything, um, especially when they don't have the ventilation correct and they don't have the, the uh, air conditioning or the heating correct. Um, I can't stand it. So right. I think that that will um, that, that make, make a comeback. And that's one of the things uh, through this is where you're building a hotel, you're pipping a hotel, whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. take a breath for a second and let's think about how you re- redo your plans. You may have to redo all of your architectural plans. You may have to redo all your design plans. This is a great opportunity for uh, hospitality designers to really think outside the box. Oh yeah. Cause everything's going to have to be reinvented. Right. And that's what I, I you know, if we're going to look at things that are positive, it's a clean slate for new ideas, things that weren't necessarily open or for discussion or viable may suddenly be Anthony. So it's going to be a great boon for creative folks out there. I think. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a zero base, right? So you, mm-hmm. you, you start over. So the first thing that just pops into my head, right. Mm-hmm. Are two things that I've never thought about until this second, uh, the roll of toilet paper that is in the toilet. Okay, it's usually a half a roll or three quarters of a roll, but it was used by somebody else and it's folded nicely to make you believe that no one's ever used it. That's right. Do, mm-hmm. do we go to full rolls of toilet paper because I, or, or sealed toilet paper because I don't want to touch somebody else's toilet paper mm-hmm. or could somebody else touch it? Or a pen at the front desk. Thank you for that snot that you just did. Oh, sorry. I didn't even, yeah. I'm, allergy season has kicked in full full force around here at the uh, Hausman Resort. Pool. Yeah, that, 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 sorry. No, that was a lot louder than you thought. <laughs> <laughs> the mic is just so good. <laughs> and, uh, do, 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 do people hand a pen to you at the front desk now? Do, well, do, how do, about yeah. handing you a tissue? Right. Do, 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 <laughs> no, but seriously, do you hand somebody a pen? Um, you know, so it's get it's getting it's going to get strange. So I think you got to make those decisions, and um, I, I I think that the toilet paper stays. I think the pen stays. So I made those decisions if I was running a hotel. But those are things you have to look at, right? I think you have to look at that. I think you know, have a roll, a three quarters roll, toilet paper folded. I think it is what it is. I mean, right now, um, uh, I don't think that there's any uh, history that that that's what. Uh, you know, contaminating us if you if you touch somebody's uh, roll of toilet paper. So it's just so many things so to think about. Things, That's my point. I, like 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 I just made that statement. It sounds ridiculous. I, actually, I, I may want that back. Oh, talking <laughs> about one back. This may be a good time to to do what I uh, promised I'd do last week. Oh, uh, what is that? Uh, someone uh, apparently. Um, I've been on TV for ten years, and I've been doing this for a long time. And I I've just been in the forefront for a very Have very you? long time. I, I was a general manager at twenty nine years old. And mm-hmm. so I've always been in a supervisory position and very rarely do I say something if, if ever that I really regret or, or uh, that I offended someone. So I said something last week on mm-hmm. uh, line cause I was pissed off about somebody right. walking around without a mask and gloves on in my neighborhood. Then I said somebody that offended, I said something that offended somebody. So I'm not going to say what I said, but I do apologize if you were offended. Uh, it's not my, I'm not here to offend anyone, but I am who I am and I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And if you're offended by it, I apologize. Um, I don't want to offend people, uh, but I'm not going to hold back when I feel something. And maybe I should have said that. And for that, I'm sorry and uh, that you're offended. Well, I think it's a matter of how um, if you say something, we all say something sometimes that we don't mean. But for uh, we got a, sometimes we have a lot of negative energy and it just comes out. And these things happen. We're emotional people. You're you know, you are out there all the time. And one of the things that you do, Anthony, is you try to be as real as possible. And I think all of us have the capacity to sometimes say or do things that we don't necessarily mean, but they feel right in that no, second. But you know what? But, but, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and get myself in more trouble, Glenn. Oh, God um, almighty. It, it, just, it, it just came off of a, a, one of my dearest friends passing away. Yeah, I know. Um, and and uh, it was maybe 12 hours and 24 hours. Mm-hmm. And um, so what I said was, this is serious. And uh, if people are walking in the streets and they're not taking it seriously, there should be consequences. I went I, I went too far. I shouldn't have said what I said. But yeah. but 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 I am serious. Like this, there are consequences. There should mm-hmm. be consequences. And uh, we got to take this seriously. So again, I'm sorry you were offended. Don't want to get on my soapbox. As I said, I don't want to get on my soapbox. Brenda O'Shea, who said I was on my soapbox last week, just popped up. So 
Uh, uh, that was funny. I said soapbox, and Brenda told me I was on my soapbox. <laughs> so let, let's, let's bring Brenda's comment up. It says, I'm looking All right. The, the, the credit card, card one? This one right here? Yeah. So uh, the question is, is um, I'm not sure. Ask me on Hospital Success. We'll get you an answer. Um, and if I don't get you an answer, a hundred other people will, will give you the best answer, including your friend, Bill, Bill, who, who works in your community. So, uh, that was a great show, my friend. Uh, I know ha having him on, having Jim on was, was absolutely amazing right. and, and, t and tells me, um, you know, your, your bandwidth as a producer. Yeah, man. I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that. Increase, we're increase let's, your salary. We're let's talk. Salary. I can't wait. We're going to double it from zero to nothing. Zero. Oh. All right, so tomorrow, guys, we got a great show. Of course, we got Chris Green back, and we're going to have uh, Greg Friedman. You all know uh, Greg Friedman from uh, Peachtree uh, Hospitality in Stonehill. He was just on CNBC on Sunday. Plus the one and only the incredible Jerry Inzarello, CEO. His latest title is of uh, CEO of our Jerry uh, Gate Development Authority. That's uh, He's uh, he's pretty awesome get that Anthony got. So talk about good producers. He got that one. We're going to have a great well, actually, No, yeah. actually, you got it. Because well, who introduced he, me to Forbes? Who introduced me to Forbes? That was me. That way, I think you that introduced me friend. to Forbes. <laughs> oh, 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 wait, no, I actually. Wait, who 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 introduced me to Peter Crisetti? Not me. Okay, then uh, I, I thank Peter. Um, but yeah, it's a big get. Um, and uh, I just want you to uh, do me a favor. Spell his last name for everyone so everybody can Google him to see. I, who, all right, <laughs> Jerry Inzerillo. I N Z E R I L L O. All right. And, so, then, and, and, then, and, and then Google the images with his name, and you'll see uh, everybody. I'll just tell you. You'll tell every human being that's ever ever lived uh, it calls Jerry a best Everybody, friend. Everybody's I, got a name that you know as a picture with, with this I, guy. I, I was at the Four Seasons with him. I don't know if I told you mm -hmm. stars. At the Four Seasons with him, unfortunately, right after Anthony Bourdain passed away. And we both had Anthony Bourdain stories. And so that morning we weren't planning. You know, We didn't know, obviously, that Anthony was going to pass away. And right. we had breakfast and we were both mm -hmm. consoling each other and talking. Mm -hmm. And I never met Anthony, but I have an Anthony Bourdain story about uh, how our – our um, our uh, careers collided, and um, and of course he has a million uh, Anthony Bourdain stories, and he was actually working on the show apparently with him. But anyway, wow. uh, I'm in the Four Seasons dining room in uh, New York City at their hotel, and all of a sudden this gentleman, very you know, tall, good looking, well suited gentleman, runs over, looks me right in the eye. I think he's looking at me, and he puts his hands out and like an idiot. I jump up. And I'm like, I have to hug this guy, I guess. Maybe he's a fan or an old friend, I don't remember. And he does a quick pivot, and him and Jerry jump into each other's arms, and it was the president of Four Seasons Hotels. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the guy just knows everyone. And then if you go if you go online, you'll see, you know, it just he's been everywhere. I was just watching a fight um, with that big fight that just happened uh, a couple of, with Andy Ruiz, and um, uh, it, it, it escapes me. Anyway, it was in Saudi Arabia. And I I look at the end of the fight when they're pan they're putting up the champion's hand and guess mm -hmm. who's standing next to the champion? Oh Jerry Carrillo. Right, of course he is. <laughs> All right. So then on uh, on Wednesday we've got a great GM panel with uh, the GMs for the Moxie Times Square, Grady Collin at the Garden City Hotel, one of our our friends where we record out of a lot. Uh, the GM from Lapeer out west. On Thursday we've got Manny uh, Rappenecker. She's the VP of Global Brand Leader at Marriott Hotels. Where that's when's she coming uh, on? Pretty, Wait, Thursday, so Thursday, Thursday, as well as uh, Mark Ergang is coming on on Thursday uh, as, as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Then Very um, cool. we got a great show on Friday with Mark Gavin and Joe Rice. They're going to uh, help us um, uh, for Feel Good Friday. Get that LinkedIn profile in shape. Learn what you need to do to get back uh, to get recruited for a great job when we get out of all of this mess. So then they'll uh, really give you some great um, stuff to, to there. On Monday, we got an international update. What's going on around the world with uh, Rob Patterson, like the aforementioned CEO of Best Western uh, Great Britain, and Fabian uh, Bartnick, a good uh, buddy of mine who handles revenue management and lives in Singapore. Um, then uh, we've got um, another hotel group. We got Del Ross coming on to help you guys find some success strategies at your property. On ne then next Wednesday, we got another, um, we got Stowe Shoemaker, the dean of UNLV. Oh my God. Then on the day after that, we're going to help you guys find out how to get from hospitality into the healthcare industry because that industry is going to be huge. And I could go on and on and on, but we're already getting into to May with these amazing names that we have on here. Unbelievable. What's our Feel Good Friday? Our Feel Good Friday is going to be um, people helping us find a path forward with um, 
uh, with uh, Mark Gavin, the founder of the CEO of ePresence, to help you create a great LinkedIn profile to make you sparkle and shine. And uh, Joe Rice of JDI Recruiting to help us uh, get back into the job market. And, you know, there's two young ladies that I mm-hmm. spoke to uh, at UNLV. I did mm-hmm. an uh, event for uh, UNLV uh, last last year uh, for a charity. Anyway, these two young ladies have this great concept of mm-hmm. how to bring college students and executives together. And they did a whole presentation for me, uh, I think, Friday. And we're going to have them on because once they're ready to showcase this, mm-hmm. I really want to get this out there because I think it's what every college should be doing. They're doing it themselves separate from UNLV, but they sh- every single college should be doing what they're doing and how they bring um, uh, people from the industry and college students together, especially now. I think that's probably the most important thing we can be doing is talking talking through how do we make sense of this and what this is, mm-hmm. uh, what we think this may, may look like. And I think uh, if you're a very... Uh, uh, if you're a go-getter, there's never been a time better in the history of our country yep. outside of who was first born uh, to, to go out and make your career. But you're mm-hmm. going to have to fight and you're going to have to uh, scrap. And I think th- the way they're uh, putting together their plan from a podcast to every I don't want to screw it up, but we're, we're, we're maybe Friday or maybe the following week. We'll have them on, and I think they're they're yep. wonderful, uh, wonderful. So anyway, beautiful. All right. So um, before we wrap up, I know you guys have uh, all been wondering, Glenn, how did your pork butt come out? Well, I smoked it for thirteen hours, Anthony, and it came out absolutely uh, fabulous over there. I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could email you over some so you could get a taste of how good that came out. He's really moved. You're touched. You're blown away by my pork butt. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll just leave it. We'll just leave it at that because uh, Anthony's jealous of my barbecue skills. What are you going to do no, about I that, just, everybody? I, 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 there's two things I never want to happen again. I never want you to say. Uh, I never want you to sneeze into a microphone, and I never want you to uh, say pork bite again. All right, I will uh, try not to sneeze or say pork shoulder. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, I want to thank again Bartek for being here when we needed them most. And I want to thank you guys for being here every single day. And if you're missing any of our shows, well, why don't you sign up for our newsletter? Text the word hotel to 66866 and get all of our unbelievable content sent to you every single Sunday night. Yeah. Yes, I also no. want to say one, one other thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you take that off so people can see my beautiful face? You know, I had come Put it back on. With- Put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> with two of our sponsors, Porcelain <laughs> Nosa. Sorry. Thank you, Jeff. Little, with, little Porcelain Nosa, with Porcelain Nosa and Cintas and kind of how they're working through this. And they've been great sponsors and um, how they're working through this and what their messaging is. So we'll be talking to them uh, coming up because they have offerings that I think are very important right now. And, and one of the things that they both said to me is mm-hmm. like, listen, we don't want to sell anything. Right now, this is about helping people. I said, exactly. And we need to talk about some of those products. So we're going to be talking about that coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, And uh, so um, thank you, Glenn. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here today. And we'll see you back here tomorrow at 12 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Thanks for being here. So for Anthony and myself, Glenn, uh, I don't know. Thanks for checking in. Hope you guys have some no vacancy again one day. And hey, we love you. Be safe.